Welcome back. In this video we will show you how to create custom sub-calendars in the reservation calendar and how to set up and use these sub-calendars. A new sub-calendar can be created using this button with the green plus sign on the left side of your screen. First we need to give the calendar a name, which can be entered here. Then we need to select if the calendar will be used for rooms, so the time axis is in days, or if it will be used for other facilities, like a conference room, wellness center, etc., so the time axis will be in hours. We can also set up the display of the sub-calendar by adjusting the size of columns and rows. The more rooms you have, the smaller you should make your rows, so you can see the whole calendar without having to scroll up and down. You can also select if you want to highlight unpaid reservations in the sub-calendar. Unpaid reservations are marked with the red line on the bottom. Partially paid reservations are marked with multiple red lines. And paid reservations do not have any lines at all. The last two options are important if you're working with an older computer. Adjusting the reservation preview and the range of dates that will be displayed can affect the performance of our software. Automatic loading of the reservation preview, or reservation hint, is the most demanding for your computer's performance. Similar rules apply for the second section. If you select more days to load, it can slow down the performance of our software. The last thing you can set here is the drag and drop. If you move a reservation with the drag and drop method, you will be asked to verify that you want to make this change. If you don't want to receive this prompt, you can disable this function. Okay, let's move on to the second tab, Rooms. Here you can select which rooms will be displayed in your subcalendar. You can select all or only some of the rooms. As we mentioned before, rooms will be displayed by the type of calendar. If it is by hour, you will see only your wellness center, conference room, etc. If it is by day, you will see all the normal rooms and apartments in your hotel. You can easily set up which rooms will be displayed by using the drag and drop method from the right side of the screen to the left. Now on to the third tab, general information. There are more options here. Cleaning, where you can activate the room cleaning function and set when the rooms will automatically be marked dirty. Reservation payment status, where you can set if the payment status will be defined by the room account balance or if the status needs to be changed manually in the reservation detail. Recalculation of the room account. If you make changes in the reservation that affect the price, you will be asked if you want to recalculate the room account according to the changes you made. Some users find this annoying. So you can disable the automatic recalculation. But remember, you'll have to make all recalculations manually from the room account. Placing method for online reservations. You can select if your reservations will be placed by the set room order or if they will be spread evenly by availability of rooms in a certain room type. You can also choose to automatically switch reservation status. So you can set that reservations which are not checked in by a certain time will be canceled in your reservation calendar. Finally, you can set an automatic update which is the time span for refreshing your new sub-calendar. The last tab is quite important, which is the user permissions for your sub-calendar. You can limit some of your users to only view the calendar. You can also use this function for only some of your employees, wellness employees, for example, so they can only see the wellness calendar. And that's it. You've finished setting up your sub-calendar. The sub-calendar will be placed among the others here on the left side of the reservation calendar. You can also adjust the order of the calendars by using the drag and drop method, like this. That's it for today. Thank you for joining us.